Hello, this is a video I'm making for people who might be thinking of starting S283, the OU module Astronomy and Planetary Science, starting uh, in the autumn of 2014. I'm Dave Rothery, I'm the module team chairman. I'm just going to give you a little bit of an introduction. Um, if you have done the Open University Future Learn Moons MOOC, you may have met me, um, but I would say if you want to do this Level 2 course, um, without doing any University Level 1 science, it's a tough ask. But if you've done our Introduction to Science courses at Level 1, uh, you should be fine. Planetary Science is a super subject to study, whether you're following uh, a geology, Earth Sciences pathway towards a Natural Sciences degree, or whether you want um, Physics and Astronomy. Planets fits both bills. Um, so, here's my office. Let's turn this round now, if you've had enough of looking at me. Here's my office. It's a uh, bit of a mess. I'm very busy trying to finish a uh, book on Mercury at the moment. OK, S283. It's still based on books. I love books for a whole lot of reasons. These books, are you'll be using them for the third, fourth time. We've used them three times in this new edition already. You're the fourth people to use them. So they're, they're still pretty much in date. But of course, the thing about books is that you can't just click on a link to see videos and activities and so on. And that's why with 283, it's very important to use the forum. This is, this is last year's forum. Um, there are things happening every week. There, um, this is your guide to what to do each week if you want to keep to time. It tells you what to do. Uh, what to read, what to, and these are links to activities and so on. Um, I'll tell you about the assignments. There are four tutor marked assignments, TMAs. You get them from uh, assessment resources. And here's, scroll down, here's TMA1, it's cut off date. Click on that to get to it, some general information. And uh, here's question one, and click on to question two, and so on. Um, one of the questions has some uh, figures. Um, here's one of the figures. That's a question about cratering on the moon. Or not the moon, but cratering on airless bodies. OK, these TMAs are um, what we call nowadays formative. You don't get a mark from the continuous assessment that counts towards your overall grade for the course. But you do need to score over... 40% in total on the assignments to get a passport in to take the exam. Uh, so you need to do the TMAs if you want to take the exam at the end of the year, as I hope you will do. And also, if you do the TMAs, you'll get feedback from your tutor. And that feedback is very important in helping you improve. And we do find that the people who do best in TMAs tend to do best in the exams. Uh, you will interact with your tutor in ways that depend on uh, where you're based. All tutors will offer online uh, tutorials of some sort. Some are national, some are just by your own individual tutor. Um, if we go here on the uh, on the website, um, it's a very populated forum, um, but there are uh, discussions from students and staff and. Uh, and tutors here. Uh, so just keep following this. There's a new tutorial pretty much every week on each chapter. Uh, tutorial just means you're interacting with a tutor. Um, they can take a variety of, um, of, of forms. It's your chance to interact with, with a tutor. If you're in a region that's well populated, you may find your region offers a day school where you can get together with other students and your tutor. So if you can get physically together that's a, a great way to progress. Um, now today's a bit of a special day for us here because it's the meeting of the award board for S283. So I'm going to introduce you to the rest of the, the module team who are gathering to uh, look at the um, scripts, particularly those on the borderlines, and decide who gets a grade 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and who has to uh, do a reset. And our external examiner is coming here today as well. So. Uh, I'll show a little bit of that process, but first a little bit more about the course. What does it contain? Well, two books, Introduction to the Solar System, Introduction to Astrobiology. And the intro to the Solar System 
uh, you find out about the solar system bodies in general. We then look at the structure of terrestrial planets, that's rocky planets, here we go. Um, if you've done any geology courses on the Earth, some of this, which is plate tectonics, will sound familiar to you. See if you're spreading. We then go on to universal well, solar system wide, planetary wide processes of, um, of uh, volcanism and, uh, and cratering. Then we move on to planetary atmospheres, the terrestrial planets. Then we go on to the giant planets, their internal structure and particularly their atmospheres. Then we look at some minor bodies and then we look at some, some meteorites. Sort of what you'd expect from an intro to the solar system. Then the second book, Introduction to Astrobiology, uh, tells you about life, what it is. If you've done any biology or biochemistry already, that will be uh, easy for you, DNA and RNA. Uh, what it takes for a world to be habitable, how, the, um, how climates evolve. We then go on to, um, to, pl to Mars, there's a chapter about Mars and how its climate has changed over time. Uh, where the evidence that there is for ice below the ground here is a fresh impact crater with a little bit of blue ice showing and as time goes by the ice fades away for example. So is Mars habitable? We then look at icy bodies. I really love uh, icy satellites. That's, Jup that's Jupiter's moon Io which is not icy but it's got volcanic eruptions. We go on to the icy ones where under the ice there could be liquid water, and those are possible habitats for ice. So here's Europa, and we'll talk a bit about Enceladus as well, because that's getting exciting. And then Titan, a uh, big satellite of Saturn with an atmosphere and lakes of methane. And then we look at detection of exoplanets, because we're concerned with how many planets are there around other stars that might be habitable, and how would we find if they were habitable. And we wind up with a little bit of... Um, it's more than fun, I don't want to call it fun, but we look at the chances of there being extraterrestrial intelligence and how we would find signals from extraterrestrial intelligence. And that's the end of the course. I think it's um, a, a great field of study, otherwise I wouldn't be doing it. I'll just take you outside and show you what's outside uh, my office. This is part of a planetary and space sciences uh, discipline of the physical sciences department. Big mosaic of uh, Mercury here. I'm uh, working on Mercury, so are my students. So one of them won a, won a prize with this poster here about uh, Mercury's faults and how it sh shrinks. Um, it's not just Mercury here. We've got people working here. Trace gas assimilation on Mars. Laboratory simulation of Martian gas chemistry. GM morphology of craters on Mars. Susan, you work on Mars. What are you doing on Mars? This is for S283 students. Um, I'm looking at gullies on Mars, which are features carved by liquid water, or so we think. Anyway. Thank you. As indeed, we will study in uh, that Mars chapter of Introduction to Astrobiology. It's only nine in the morning. Blimey, nobody else is here yet. Normally this is full of PhD students. Here's, oh, that's a postdoc as well. Oh. Liam, you're working on Mars, aren't you? I am indeed working on Mars. Uh, so this is where curriculum support is based, and this is where we'll be holding the award board. This is Ashaya, who's our curriculum assistant, and Jenny, who's the curriculum manager. Say hello to next year's students, ladies. Hello, students. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? <laughs> Tell us what you do, Ashaya. Oh, um, I look uh, after all the course team and have the students, if I can. Um, I hope you enjoy. Um, the module S283. Thanks. Jenny, what's your job? Everything. Yeah, <laughs> and we're very grateful for it. <laughs> so now we're waiting, along with various other award boards, for our external examiner to arrive. So here's the team, Mahesh. Say hello to the students. What do you do, planetary science-wise? I'm a lunar scientist. I uh, analyse moon rocks to find out what they are made up of. Okay, so that's Mahesh. Here's Manish. Manish, what do you do? I build instruments to go to Mars and look at the atmosphere and the surface. Thank you. And you rewrote the Mars chapter in... I did in, uh, in the, Titan. the Titan. The Titan chapter. I rewrote the Mars chapter. You did the Titan chapter. <laughs> I'm Mike. Hi there. What do you do, Mike? I'm a volcanologist and I specialise in flood basalts. And I helped write part of book one on planetary volcanism. Indeed you did. Okay, Ooh. there you go. Um, Dave, we have the most important member of this entire team, which is Jenny. Uh, oh, I know, Jenny's already said hello, but <laughs> say hello again. Hello again. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, <laughs> end of a long day. We've just yeah, about no, got just through just looking so at everybody. <laughs> We've adjudicated the circumstances so. for all the borderline students and being fair to everybody. And I'd just like to introduce to you the external examiner for the course, Professor Jamie Gilmore from Manchester University. Jamie, would you like to say hello to next year's students? Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm looking forward to reading all your superb exam answers in about, about a year's time. So best of luck with this fantastic course. Thanks, Jamie. OK, back to work, guys. OK, I pretty much covered everything I wanted to say yesterday, apart from taking you through what the exam consists of. Well, it's not an open book exam, so you can't take your textbooks with you. Um, but we try not to make the exam a memory test. We want you to be able to demonstrate that you understand things about the solar system, that you can interpret things, that you understand processes. I mean, we wouldn't expect you to know, say, that Jupiter is five times further from the Sun than the Earth and Neptune's 30 times. That's a basic scale. We expect you to know that Neptune's atmosphere is mostly hydrogen, but the topmost layer of clouds is, is methane for example. Just very basic facts. Um, let me tell you a little more about the exam. Well, one important thing is that there is a specimen exam paper. Let me show you that on the uh, module website. So, we go back to the module website, find assessment resources, click on assessment resources, and we saw this with the TMAs previously. Scroll down, you get to the exam. There's a specimen exam paper and answers, and this will open up a specimen exam paper. There's a computer mark form to fill in for the computer mark questions, which count 28% of the exam, covering the whole course. And then part two covers the first book, and part three covers the second book. There are four questions in each part, and um, you choose three of them. So that's 20 minutes per question for part two, 20 minutes per question for part three, if you've taken an hour to get through the multiple choice part. Some people do it quicker. And there are answers, um, suggested answers for these on the website. So do familiarise yourself with the specimen exam. Come exam time, um, we run uh, revision tutorials, exam answering tutorial so there's a chance to look at previous past papers which can be bought uh, from the OU Students Association. Let me just show you uh, the exam paper that we finished the marking of yesterday. So this was the exam done on June 2014. It begins with the computer mark questions and here's a profile through a planet's atmosphere. You're asked to recognise what these layers in the atmosphere are and which planet can it be? Well, I mean, it's got an atmosphere, so it's not going to be Mercury. The surface temperature is um, about 220 Kelvin. It can't be Venus or, or Earth. It, it's going to be Mars. That shouldn't be difficult. And then recognising these, these layers, for example. Um, OK, there's always a uh, graph to plot. Use some data to uh, normalise and, and plot a graph. People can score very highly on that question. Here's a, a diagram we ask you to recognise. It's saying it's a profile through the atmosphere of Jupiter. So what are these um, cloud layers made of? Well, this is a figure from the book. You should recognise it. And if you realise that Jupiter's outermost clouds are ammonia, and then there's ammonium, hydrogen, sulphide and water uh, lower down, supposedly, you will have got the compositions of these layers, but we also asked what physical state. So even if you didn't know the chemical composition, you would have got a mark each time for saying this is particles of ice, particles of ice, particles of ice. Not solid particles, not liquid droplets. So depending how much you know, you can score more or less marks. We asked you what instruments we use to study the clouds, and then discount for dis account for discrepancies between the model in that figure and measurements that were made when the Galileo entry probe visited Jupiter. Even if you know nothing about what these layers are actually of, you should understand why there can be discrepancies between the model that derived these and what a probe found. So it's understanding the science rather than memorising facts that's important. Um, I gave you a picture there showing some young gullies on Mars asking you to interpret those. Now here's one. This is um, um, a place where 
you needed to here's a uh, what happens to it, the light of a star when a planet goes in front of it it cuts the starlight down in this case this is an exoplanet around distant star the light is cut down to point uh, nine nine eight six um, of the normal flux so that's the fraction of the star that's hidden by the planet well, there's a formula which tells you that but you don't need the formula there's a star there's a planet going in front of it if you know how much of the star is hidden by that planet you should be able to work out the relative d diameter of this planet compared to that star I mean the, the the area of the planet is the square of its radius area of the star of the square of it is the square of its radius so it's just one over the other and a factor of, of, of squaring it you don't need a formula level 2 science you should be able to work out how much of that area is hidden by this small object going in front of it so that's the level of um, science maths reasoning we expect you to have any really complicated formulae we will give you in the exam paper and expect you to remember them okay that's about all I want to say if you um, do uh, sign up for a course I wish you luck and I'll uh, doubtless see you on the course forums bye how could I forget one other thing I wanted to say um, we expect you to have a level one science background but you don't need any background in planetary science before beginning this course you do not need a planetary science background however if you wish to prime yourself up before you start here's a book which some people have found useful it's a very short introduction to planets published by Oxford University Press and I wrote it so I'm biased but it's it costs less than a tenner you can buy it from Oxford University Press you can buy it from Amazon it's not a bad little primer although I say it myself but I'll repeat you don't need you do not need planetary science background obviously it helps the more you know it helps um, so it's entirely up to you okay that is the end good luck <laughs>